Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me today, whether or not you are joining me live or joining me on the replay later or perhaps Facebook. Uh, sorry, we are on Facebook. I meant on YouTube later on. Thank you so much. All right, before I get started, I'm going to flip my screen so that you can see everything around the right way. So let me just do that now. Okay, we'll get these controls up. There we go. And we'll just do a little bit of adjusting. We'll get that all where it should be. Great. Oh, good. All right. So as you are jumping on, say hi. Let me know that you're here. Um, it's always great to have you chatting with me. It makes it so much more fun. And I will just bring this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments there. Now, I have been having a few issues with my Facebook Lives on my iPad lately, so I'm also going to bring it up on my computer. So I've got that over here at the side. So I'll just do a little refresh of the screen there and I'll get that up as well. Just in case my iPad freezes part way, I've got my computer here as a backup. Oh, and I'll need to turn that sound off. There we go. No, off. There we go. Good. Okay, who have we got with us today? Let's see. Megan's here. Hi, Megan. How are you going? Great to have you here. Um, oh, you love the birthday card that I made for my daughter. Thank you so much. Yeah, the seashells. It's on display out in the family room um, with the beautiful dugong card that my other daughter made for her as well. So we've actually still got all the um, birthday decorations up. So um, <clears throat> usually it takes um, my girls, my, cause, because my girls do most of the decorating these days and it does take them quite some time to do all the decorations. So usually we leave the decorations up for about a week or two after the birthday um, has occurred, whose ever birthday that is, so that they can enjoy all the decorations for a little while longer. It extends the birthday. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for that. Yes, love the dugong card too, Megan says. Very clever. Yes, my daughter is very talented um, in her paper crafting, or in lots of ways actually, but um, especially with her paper crafting, she makes the most beautiful projects. So um, yeah, yeah, it's really great. Hey Angela, how are you going? Great to have you here today. I have got some new products to share with you today. Um, and I'll talk to you um, talk to you about those in a moment. Now, as I'm going um, along, as I'm filming, feel free to pop a comment below. Now, if you are watching this live today, you will see a red live button up the top here in the left hand corner, and you'll know that you're watching me live. If you don't see that live button, then you'll know that you're watching it on the replay. Um, and of course, on YouTube, it's always on replay. It's not live on um, YouTube. But um, I still really appreciate you coming along and watching. Now, all of the details will be um, here. I'll put lots of links up as well um, so that um, you'll have all the links that you need to be able to um, follow me on social media. You'll be able to get to my online store and all those things. So on YouTube, the links will be below the video in the video details. On Facebook, they will be above the video um, in the Facebook um, details there. So that's where you will find them. Um, you might need to click on more to have them drop down and be able to see them all, etc. So um, yeah, so be sure to do that. Uh, now, what was the other thing? There was something else I was going to say to you. Oh yes, so if you, even if you are watching the replay, feel free to leave a comment and um, I always do respond to those comments and uh, I go back and I I'll look over those. So thank you so much for commenting. If you like what you see, feel free to give me a thumbs up or some hearts, I really appreciate that. Feel free to share this video as well if you know of somebody who you think might enjoy this video um, or enjoy the projects that I'm sharing today. Feel free to share it with them as well. That would um, be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, and so I've got my little I've got my little flyer here just to remind people too. <laughs> well, actually, this one says go in the draw to win a prize. This is a really old one. I don't I don't know. I didn't check that before I held it up. I actually don't have a prize draw today though. So it's probably not the right one to be holding up today. Um, but yes, do feel free to um, comment, like, and share. I should fold it over, shouldn't I? 
Oh, it's about, probably about time I do a, uh, a prize draw. I'll have to think about that for next week. Um, I haven't organised that for this week, but I need to think about that for next week because I haven't done one for a little while. So there you go. <laughs> and forget about the Australian residents only because anyone can share my videos. <laughs> I really need to print a new one of those. All right. Okay, let me just see. Oh, Megan said, uh, my daughter must get it from her dear mother. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I was her first um, creative teacher, I guess. So <laughs> she did go on to be to become a graphic designer, however. So uh, she surpassed the teacher. <laughs> uh, all right, I have got um, a class coming up really soon. It's the Whimsy and Wonder class. Now, I made a card last week, you might remember, this one here, using the Whimsy and Wonder Suite. Um, now, this isn't one of the cards that is going to be in my class, but I do have some other um, projects, three other projects that are going to be in the class. It's coming up um, for anyone that is here in Australia that would like to participate in that class. Um, the uh, It's going to be on the... Uh, 13th of November but the um, orders and the RSVP the uh, RSVPs actually close this coming Saturday the 30th of October so if you would like to participate in that class I've put up an event um, here on my Facebook business page if you're watching this on YouTube later then feel free to get in contact with me for more information about that and um, I can certainly give you the link to the event um, but you need to register in the event and then I've got some ordering links there for the products that you'll need for the class. So then you click on those links, go through to my online store, order your products and then I will send you out the project kits um, and the tutorial video and photographs of the finished products so that you know um, you have a bit of a point of reference. So if you'd like more information about that class, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask me any of those questions that you might have. Um, Megan says still deciding whether I'll be getting that as you've got so she's got so much Christmas products but it's so cute I know same with me I felt the, the same way at first as well because I've got a lot of other Christmas products and um, in the end I just succumbed because it's just so pretty I love the colors in that suite and um, I love the whimsical trees and yeah I just yeah, it was just too pretty. So I just had to have it. And that iridescent paper, you see that that candy stripe paper in the back, it's got that iridescent look to it. And all of the designer series papers that have got like the, it's like a silver foil finish, but it's actually iridescent. It's really beautiful. So, and I love everything sparkly, so I just had to have it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm gonna be holding a class with that suite because I love it so much. And I want to be able to share that with more people. So let me know if you'd like more information about that. Um, hey, Jenny, how are you going? How's the weather down in Tassie today? We've got a glorious day today, actually. It's beautiful and sunny and warm, um, but not too hot. It's just really been a lovely day today, which is very nice. Yeah. All right. Um... Oh, your goddaughter would be into that. Ah, would she? Awesome. That's so cool. Well, see, maybe you do need to purchase the um, the products, Megan, so then you can share them with your goddaughter. And she can have a bit of crafting time with you. That would be lovely. <laughs> oh, it's cold down in Tassie today, is it, Jenny? Oh, wow. Okay. So is it, norm is it unusually cold or is it normally still a bit cool at this time of the year? I would have thought it would be warming up a bit by now, but maybe not. You're a fair bit further south than we are. <laughs> All right. Um, now, what I wanted to let you know was a couple of a couple of other quick things, and then we'll get into what we're going to be creating with today. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, we uh, will potentially be coming into some shipping delays. Um, there have already been some because of the COVID pandemic. There's been a lot of shipping delays globally around the world um, in all different um, uh, businesses and things like that, not just specifically Stampin' Up, 
uh, but lots of other businesses as well, a lot of retail stores and things like that because there's a lot of um, supply issues, uh, shipping issues, port issues because the, the ports, they're not able to get the ships in quick enough to unload the products, etc, etc. So there might just be a few delays. So just be patient. At the moment, um, the orders that I've been receiving have been coming in two days, so which is amazing. That's quicker than normal. Uh, so the last couple of orders I've had have been super, super quick. Um, but just be, just please be patient. Um, Stampin' Up! is doing their best to um, explore other avenues to get uh, products to us as quickly as possible. But at the moment, we're all we're doing really well, getting them really quickly. I was going to have a quick look, <clears throat> excuse me, just to double check again about um, products that might be on back order. I did check the specific products we're using today. I did check them on the weekend, but sometimes our um, status report doesn't get updated on the weekend. I don't think, I'm not actually 100% sure. I should clarify that one. But I was just going to double have a quick squizzy there just to double check that these products we're using today are still available. Um, and of course, we had the big stamp sale last week too, which was fantastic. Did anyone get any stamps in the stamp sale? I got a few, uh, a few extra stamp sets that I've been wanting. So let's just see. Double checking on my computer here. No, we look like we're all good. The ones we're using today are... are um, Still available. Well, actually, in saying that, now that I'm looking, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a real frog in my throat today. Um, the ones that we're using today um, actually haven't been released to the public yet. They're only currently available to demonstrators as an early release. Uh, well, actually, as a pre-order, but they're going to be released um, early as an early release to customers from the 2nd of November. So that's next week, isn't it? That's next Tuesday already. Oh my goodness, can you believe next week is going to be November? And my son just reminded me when he got home a short while ago that it's only two months till Christmas. Today, two months today till Christmas. Can you believe that? Where has the year gone, right? Crazy. Um, yes, it is the Eden Sweet, Megan, you are right. So this is the Eden's Garden Suite, which I'm going to be sharing with you today. And we're going to be playing with this um, suite today to create a gorgeous card. Now, this beautiful suite um, has got a few components to it. And some of these, as I said to you, it's an early release. So the stamp set and dies are going to be carrying over into the January to June 2022 mini catalogue but they're gonna be released early on the 2nd of November. So you'll be able to get them. Now, not only that, but as an early release or as a special release, they are also releasing some designer series paper and some embellishments, which I will share with you today. Now the papers and the embellishment are only while supplies last and they won't be carrying over into the new catalog. So once they sell out, they're gone for good. So if you love this, once you see me use it today and I'll show you all the products, um, as soon as they become available on the 2nd of November, be sure to get them um, while you can so that um, you don't miss out, especially on those papers and embellishments. They're absolutely gorgeous, so I can't wait to show you. All right, so I was just going to have a quick little look. Um, here's the flyer here. So it shows, um, shows here the stamp set and the dies and I'll show them to you in person and then you've got the paper you've got some specialty paper and the beautiful gems or you'll be able to purchase all of the products as a um, product collection together and get all of them if you love them so let me share them with you now the other thing is too before I do that let me just tell you that if you do love these products and you want to get them straight away you can if you join my team. So I have a wonderful community of beautiful, beautiful ladies. Um, currently, we don't have any men in our team, not to say that we might not down the track, but currently we just have, um, there's just women in our team. And um, it's just such a beautiful community. We've all made so um, such great friendships and um, yeah, it's just a really beautiful 
um, community to be a part of. And not only that, that everybody is as crazy about card making as I am, which is fantastic because we share that love, we share that passion. We have a great time sharing our creative inspiration together. Um, we do little creative challenges together and I give prizes and all sorts of things. Um, and I really like to look after my team. Um, so if uh, you would like more information about that now as I said to you you can get this um, today you can get this straight away if you if you would like to join Stampin Up and become part of my stamping community um, you can get this in your starter kit now the starter kit is only um, $169 but you get to choose $235 or up to $235 worth of product so you get all that extra for free Plus you get free shipping on your starter kit, so that's an added saving. And then from there on, you will get 20% discount and you can build that up to 25% in time um, on all of your Stampin' Up! products. So how awesome is that? It's a bit like a Costco membership. So you purchase the membership, which is the starter kit, and then um, you get the discount. So it's pretty awesome. But not only that, when you purchase the um when you purchase the starter kit of course you're getting all the products as well and you're getting them at a discounted price when you purchase the starter kit so if you would like more information about that or information about my team the precious paper craft gems um, then you are very welcome to get in contact with me and ask me any questions that you might have um, about joining stampin up and um, yeah you can just try it out if you decide after purchasing the starter kit um, and you become part of our stamping community if you decide then that it's not for you that is not a problem at all you just stop ordering as a demonstrator and you go back to being a customer now some people get a little bit um, wary of the word demonstrator so anyone that joins Stampin Up is called a demonstrator but it, a Stampin Up demonstrator but it doesn't mean that you have to actually demonstrate products you don't need to hold classes you don't need to do Facebook lives like I do nothing like that you can just simply purchase the product for yourself and enjoy the discount. So um, yeah, so don't be worried about that. And there's no lock-in period, so you don't have to stay for any specific time or anything like that. You can simply stop anytime you like, and there's it's really easy. So um, if you would like more information about that, feel free to let me know. Um, there you go, Megan said she is a hobby demo. Um, she joined purely for the discount and I bet you're enjoying it aren't you Megan and you love it it sounds like you are because you you always have um, you always always have great things to say whenever you jump on live um, on my Facebook lives so yeah and a lot of my team members just do the same they just they don't sell to anybody they just purchase the products for themselves enjoy the discount enjoy the community enjoy the fun that we have together and the get-togethers and all those things so um, and that is totally fine there's no pressure from me to sell no pressure from Stampin' Up! to sell um, oh there you go Megan is coming up to 10 years as a demo in the next few weeks congratulations Megan you've been around a lot longer than I have I've just had my five-year anniversary <laughs> so there you go hi Rose how are you going great to have you here today hi Navon great to have you here as well all right well I think we should tip the camera down oh actually the other thing I was going to mention too is another awesome thing with um, being part of Stampin Up is we get to uh, go to demonstrator only events and we've got one coming up in November called On Stage, and it's going to be a virtual event this year, which is what we had last year too because of COVID. And so they're calling it On Stage at Home. And let me show you what I got in the mail the other day. I got a big box of goodies. So I'm not going to reveal what's inside yet because I don't want to spoil anybody else's surprise if they haven't opened their box yet. So some of our, and look how gorgeous, look at the pretty design on there, on the box. So this box has got lots and lots of beautiful goodies and I will reveal them in time. Um, but some of our team are coming along as well to the event and it's going to be so much fun and we're going to get to see new products from the new mini catalogue which is coming out in January. We actually get to order them earlier as well than everybody else because we're attending the event 
and then demonstrators, um, the wider demonstrator base will get to order them soon after that as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's another one of the perks of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is we get access to these wonderful, exciting events and then we get to purchase product early, we get catalogues early, um, all sorts of things. So yeah, I could, I could talk about it forever, but I won't. I'll get on to crafting so that we can get going. Um, alrighty, so let me cover up the camera. I'll flip it down onto my desktop and we can get started. All right, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to cover this up, flip those cameras so we are around the right way, and I'll just adjust my camera stand. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that one's a bit squeaky today. I wonder if it would help if I oiled them. I've not actually oiled those um, clamps, or not clamps, what are they? They're, they're sort of like um, screws or nuts that you do up on the side of the um, phone stand. Oh wow, we are really wonky today. Let's just straighten that up a little bit. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, is that looking a little bit better now? Oh, that's better. Great. Good. Okay. So I'll just move my laptop. I'll move this over a little bit. So if you are looking for my online store, you can find it via my blog. Um, on my blog, there is a shop button. Just move that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so this is my blog here, Mandy's papercraftcreations.blogspot.com, and you will find my shop button at the top of my blog page. So it's really, really easy to find it. Then um, you can go there and have a little browse around. Now, if you are shopping with me, be sure to use my host code, and this is my current October host code. So October 2021, this is the host code um, for then. So if you're watching this later, if you're watching the replay and it's after, October 2021 there will be a different host code okay and you can always find that on my blog and I do regularly post that in my Facebook page as well okay just one moment I think okay are we back yes looks like we're back sorry about that everybody I think my internet just stalled then for a moment but I think we are all good I think we're back looking a little bit blurry however all right let me know can you pop a comment for me down in the um well down in the comments if everyone is able to see this back up again and is everything looking okay or oh, actually on my playback on my computer it looks like it is clearing up now hey Megan we've got the other Megan here Megan Lacornu. hi Megan how you going we've got two Megan's on here today oh I'm back now great thanks Jenny Thanks, Megan. Awesome. Good, good, good. I don't know what happened then. My, um, yeah, my internet just stalled. So got a few family members at home today. So um, probably everyone's on the internet. And um, yeah, <laughs> it gets a little bit tired, a little bit drained. All right. So let me show you these gorgeous products from the Eden's Garden um, Suite. So first of all, well actually, I don't know if they're calling it a suite. They're calling it, no, they're calling it an early re release collection. So first of all, we've got the designer series paper. So I'm just going to open up the pack. You can see I've cut some of this already because it does come in 12 by 12 inch sheets. So I'll open this up and show you. It's absolutely beautiful. There's actually only a couple of colors in this one. Um, I'll, just pull, I'll just pull the whole lot out. I haven't got it all organized today for you. I like to, when I can, I like to have it all organized and all splayed out ready for you. But I just haven't had that a chance to do that today. All right. So these are all the beautiful papers. Oh, gorgeous. So I think I'm showing you the front and the back of these. Let's see, how many do we have? Yes, that's the front, that's the back. Front. Oh, no, that's a different one. Hang on. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Oh, that one. That one sneaks in there. 
And then we've got that one goes with that one. And that one goes with that one and that one and that one. We don't have the extra pieces of those. I think these are the cut ones. Hang on a sec. Let's just get them out. Yep. So that one goes with that one. And this one is that greeny one. There it is. There we go. Okay, so that is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's all of them there. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Now, they've got the gold foil um, throughout them. So it is a specialty paper. And the colours that you've got in here are Evening Evergreen and, 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 oh my goodness. I think it's Evening Evergreen and Soft Suede. Uh, let me just find out on my notes. Yes, Evening Evergreen, Gold Foil, oh, Soft Succulent, sorry. Soft Succulent, not Soft Suede. Why did I say Soft Suede? Wrong, wrong Soft. <laughs> so there they are. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? And that gold foiling throughout them is beautiful. So this is the front and this is the back. So the gold foiling is on one, si one side. And then you've got a um, flat image on the other side. So as you can see, on each of the papers there's a um yeah the beautiful designs so these can be used for an array of different occasions so you love the paper jenny it's gorgeous isn't it so beautiful oh hi chitska how you going great to have you here so that's all the paper really really beautiful then there's also some other paper and their stamp up is calling this um the Ever Eden Cotton Paper. Now this is in 12 by 12 as well. And this comes in, whoops, that one we've cut into. The Evening Evergreen and the Soft Succulent. And there's quite a few sheets of each one in here. It's similar to sort of a tissue paper. It's really, really soft. We're going to be playing with some of this today. Uh, there are 10 sheets, so you get five of each of the colours in the pack. Okay, and it's very, very soft and delicate. Really pretty, really pretty paper. So we're going to play with a bit of that today. Then there is the stamp set. So this is the beautiful stamp set, the Eden's Garden stamp set. Got some lovely sentiments on here. And this is a distinctive stamp set. So you've got the different um, opacities built into the stamp. So it makes it look like a more realistic image when you stamp it. So you've got the, um, the shading in there and it makes it really easy for stamping, let me just tell you. <laughs> oh, hey, Ruth, how are you going? Great to have you with us today. Um, yes, Megan, it is almost like tissue paper, that um, the cotton paper. It sort of has a similar feel to it. It's sort of glossy on one side. I'll just bring it back in. It's sort of glossy on one side and it's more sort of a flat texture on the other side. So depending on what the look is that you're going for, as to which side you would use. Yeah. Yeah, very, very soft. I haven't tried tearing this yet. I'm not sure how it would go with the tearing technique. I was thinking that it might be nice with a tearing technique, but I haven't tried that yet. Maybe we could have a little practice with that later and see if that works. Anyway, back to the stamp set. So this is a cling stamp set. So it's a red rubber stamp set. And, um, oh, I haven't put the stamps on the block that I need, so I'll need to get some blocks out in a moment. Um, yeah, and beautiful sentiments. We've got, dear friend, how are you? My heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. Isn't that beautiful? We've got a hello there, which is very generic, which is great. You can use that for lots of different things. Sending hugs and let's celebrate everything. And then you've got these this beautiful greenery and, um, yeah, sort of the florally image there. Then we've got the coordinating dies. These are the Eden dies, and I'll take them out. We've already done some die cutting of some of those, and we've got some extra pieces in there that we haven't used. But these are so beautiful. There they are there. So we've got this beautiful border here, this leafy border. We've got this little one here. Then we've got some leaves. We've got a beautiful um, edge border here. We're going to be using that one today. And a label die as well with um, beautiful leafy images at the edges there. So they are just beautiful. 
So we're going to be using some of those today as well. And then the embellishments. Oh my goodness. You know I always say every card needs ribbon and bling. Well, look at this bling. Isn't that just gorgeous? I'll take it out of the packet so you can have a better look at it. <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. Aren't they just so blingy? So we've got these ones that look like, I forget what they call those, uh, that shape. Um, let me see if it's on my notes here. Mm, it is Marquis, M-A-R-Q-U-I-S-E is what they call them. Marquis, I think that's how you would pronounce it. And the other ones are the round ones. But yeah, these sort of look like little leaves. But they've got all the shimmery, kind of like... Um, Similar to a tear or a raindrop, Megan, but they're sort of pointed at the other end, whereas a raindrop or a tear is sort of rounded at the bottom end. This is more like a leaf shape, I guess you'd say. Yeah, but really beautiful. And you've got little tiny ones of these ones here, but they've sort of got like an iridescent finish to them. And just the colours coming out of them is just amazing. And we notice too, depending on what colour you put them on, um, as to what colours will actually come out of the the um the gem they're really beautiful yeah so there you go uh, okay i just want to check on something um with my sorry just going back to the video on my facebook page so that i can see comments over there there we go okay that's better now i'm seeing comments there um marquee is the jewelry term for a diamond cut oh is it megan oh there you go oh actually you know what i think i have heard that before too i just didn't think of that oh that's why that's why it's called that so there you go so that's all the products now we are going to be adding in a few additional products we've got some extra ribbon there's no ribbon in this collection of products so we're adding in some gold ribbon um and i'll show you the inks that we're going to be using so i'll bring everything out of my all right out of my um set there oh um had rich raspberry in there but i think i decided not to use that actually in the end that was for another one um but we're going to be using the evening evergreen and the soft succulent and we're going to be doing a little bit of embossing so we've got some versamark ink there and we're going to be using some gold embossing powder oh hey shani how are you going you'll catch up later oh no worries yes we're using the beautiful um eden's garden products today so feel free to jump back and watch the replay thanks for jumping on in shani <laughs> um oh hey judy you made it yay good on you oh ruth said she wishes she has had time to craft these days yeah you'll get back to it ruth your your time will come again it's okay all right so uh let's grab all of our things out ready now before i show you the card that we're going to be making today oh actually no i'll show you the other ones at the end i have got some other samples to show you as well but i will show you what we're going to be making today so i'll just move these inks over here for the moment and the embossing powder so this is the beautiful card that we are going to be creating today so we have got the hello there sentiment which i love because you can use it for anything we've got the beautiful border die we've got some of those leafy dies some of the marquee gems and oh, i just love the colors and that gold that pop of gold isn't that just gorgeous so oh judy likes it she said oh gorgeous <laughs> um Oh, no worries, Ruth. You'll catch the replay too? Yeah, all good. All good. Thanks so much for being here. Look forward to catching you on the replay. Um, so, oh, so Megan says she wishes that she could do embossing, but she can't because it brings on your asthma. Oh, that's no good at all, Megan. Hey, Megan, you know how we are all wearing masks these days. Have you tried doing it wearing a mask? Just a just an idea. If you have a really good fitting mask, I wonder if that would help you at all. Um, but yeah, of course, you've got to be really careful with what triggers your asthma. Um, I'm asthmatic as well, so I do understand. Um, oh, Navon says she loves the card. Fantastic. 
And Judy said that card is so her. All right, well, let's get to making it then and I will show you how to do that. Now, you know what I didn't grab out? I didn't grab out my heat tool, silly me. So let me just quickly grab that because we are doing some heat embossing today. We're going to need that. So let me grab that. Right, thankfully it is nice and handy. So I will just plug that in ready. Oh, I've got lots of things plugged in here. Let me just see. Oh, my laptop is charged, so that's good. I can unplug that one. I've only got uh, two extension cords here. So one of them is plugged into my phone. Let's plug the other one into the heat tool. And you know what else I got this week? So I'll pop the card to the side so we can create that card. Um, this week, or sorry, not this week, the end of last week, I got another order and I ordered a brand new Take Your Pick tool. Now, I had been asked about the Take Your Pick tool last week, um, but I had broken mine because I had been a little bit too rough with it and broke the spatula. <laughs> so <laughs> I was trying to unstick something and yeah, anyway, so I bought a brand new Take Your Pick tool. So I thought I would quickly open that up and show you before we get started because I did have a question about the Take Your Pick tool last Thursday when I was filming. So when you purchase your Take Your Pick tool, this is how it comes. Um, it comes packaged like this, so everything is well protected. Now, you can store it back in the box like this if you want to, but I store, I'm store. i using mine all of the time, so I store mine actually just in a pen holder. Um, there's a little bit of instructions there if you need some instructions, so you can open those up, and it's in the different languages there. But let's just move the box away. Pop that over there. All right, so it comes already with... I'll just take the lid off there. Oh, this one's nice and tight. It's brand new. So you've got the putty end here. And these little heads, they you can unscrew them and you can replace them. So once the putty is all used up in this head, you can purchase replacement heads um, that contain the putty. And then you just pop them in and screw them down. Now, when you want to use the putty, this is the putty is great for picking up small items. Um, it adheres to small items. I'll show you. I'll use it for um, this one's extruded. Extruded? Is that the word? A little bit too much putty. So I'm just going to break off the excess there. And I'll just twist that a little bit till a little bit of putty comes to the end. And then twist it back the other way again to release the pressure. If you keep the pressure on, the putty will keep oozing out. But you can use it to pick up your little gems. So we can just pick them up like that. Okay, and then we can place them down where we want them. Now, these are adhesive backed, so I won't place that anywhere right now. Um, but yeah, really great for your adhesives. Now, I should just state too, this isn't a full pack because I've used part of this row of my gems already, okay? But usually you'll have a full row here of gems as well. Okay, so don't think that it came like this. <laughs> I've already used some. All right. And so the putty is great for that, great for sequins too. We use sequins a lot here um, and the putty comes in really handy for picking up those sequins. The other end has, or actually, while we're on, on this end, let me just show you. We also have, so this is one of my other old ones. There is also a dye brush attachment. So when we're using, we're going to be using this today actually, and I'll show you how to use it. When you are die cutting some of those intricate dies and they get all those little pieces of cardstock stuck in the um, die cut piece, you use this brush to brush over it to release all of those little pieces of cardstock. And so you can buy this as an additional piece and it comes with a foam mat. It comes with two foam mats actually. Um, so you have the foam mat to put your piece on to then roll your brush on and release all of that paper. I'll show you how to use that today. But that just screws in to the end there. So you would take the putty end out. You take the putty end out. So they're interchangeable, these attachments. They're all interchangeable. So you take that out, screw that in, and there you go. All right, now I've got, this is my old spare one. So I keep this one all the time with my brush in it. And then I've got my um, stylus in the other end. 
Okay, so that's that. Now with the other end, you have the spatula, which is the one that I broke on my other one. So be careful when you're using your spatula. Don't be too rough with it, as I was. <laughs> um, that is great for picking up things. Again, you can use it to pick up your embellishments if you like to use it for, for that. Oops, there we go. So see, that's picked that up. It's also good for unsticking things. So if you've stuck something down in the wrong place, um, you can pop it in between the layers and gently jiggle it. That's how I broke mine, actually, because I was too rough. So just do it gently and release that adhesive. Now, sometimes if the adhesive is super, super sticky, um, you'll have to work it and just be really patient. Don't be in a hurry like I did because you'll, you know, you might snap it. So just be really gentle with it. Now, this twists and unlocks and then you can turn it around in the other end you've got this paper piercing tool so you can see that's nice and sharp this is really great for um, poking out some of those extra little pieces out of your dies it's great for picking things up i use mine every day for my stamp and dimensionals to pick up my stamp and dimensionals take the backings off my stamp and dimensionals it's my most used tool actually this one then, so you put the cap back on that because that's sharp. We'll twist that off, take that one out. And then you've got in here a stylus tool. Okay, so a stylus tool is great for shaping your um, dies, your punched shapes, um, for scoring your cardstock, all different sorts of things. And there's two different sizes. So there's a small size and then if you turn it over, You've got the larger size there as well so um, yeah so you can use that for lots of different things so i'll pop that one back in there you it does come with a replacement putty head as well the putty lasts for a really really long time too you don't need to replace it very often um, but there you go i like to keep my paper piercing tool always at the top because that's the one i use the most so there you go and then your extra pieces you can just store back in your box and pop that back in your box so there you go so that's your take a pick tool you'll see me using that every time I create a card so I don't think there's ever a card that I don't use it okay so that's that right let's get creating I will bring in my kit with all of my pieces pre-prepared pre-cut I'll give you all the measurements for these two so if you like to um, if you would like to create this card yourself you'll have all of the measurements there ready to go okay now let's see while I was talking what comments did I miss um, let's see let's see um, oh Megan said she hasn't tried using a mask yet she has several masks and we'll have to give that a try and we'll let you know let me know fantastic Megan I hope that that's helpful but please be careful with your asthma. Um, Amber said an alternative to gold embossing could be to use the gilded leafing. Yes, that's another great idea as well. If you can't gold emboss, use the gilded leafing. Um, Megan says love the pop of gold with the green. Judy says even though it's not pink, she loves it. Yes, <laughs> Judy does love pink. Um, probably even more than I do. <laughs> Um, Megan says she's heard of the um, gilded leafing and she's dying to try it. Ah, okay, yes. I should do it again on a Facebook Live. I think I haven't used it for a while on a Facebook Live. I did a whole technique class on it though. Um, oh, when was that? Earlier this year or maybe last year? I did a whole technique class on it. Take your t pick tool, best tool ever. Yes, I agree. Um, yep, cool. Love the scoring stylus too. Yeah, awesome. All right, let me give you all the measurements for all of these pieces. So we're starting with a card base of Evening Evergreen. So this is half of an A4 sheet, cut in, uh, obviously cut in half. I already said half. <laughs> um, it's 21 centimeters by 14.85 centimeters. And I've scored and folded that at 10.5 centimeters. I always like to score my cardstock before I fold it and you can do that on your Stampin' Up! Um, paper trimmer or you can use your scoring um, tool from your 
you can you can actually use your scoring tool from your take your pick tool and a ruler uh, metal rulers work really well and you can score that at ten and a half centimeters and you'll know that's right in the middle and then fold it um, if you can't score it if you don't have a way of scoring it simply fold your your cardstock in half and then just press down on the edges really well I just find with scoring it first it does give you a nice crisper finish then we'll take our bone folder and we'll just run that along the edges now if you don't have a bone folder to do that you might like to use the edge of one of your stamp blocks to run along the edge just whatever you use to run along the edge make sure it has a smooth surface so that you don't scratch your cardstock okay but the bone folder is the best one I find that and you can also use this to score as well you can use the bone folder to score your cardstock too and also for shaping your cardstock too if you're shaping some of your die cut pieces or punched shapes you can use your bone folder for that straightening out ribbon also using your bone folder um, especially the linen trim and those and the baker's twine they can get a bit curly because they're on a tight spool and you can straighten them out using your bone folder all right then we've got a piece of basic white cardstock and that piece measures 10.1 centimeters by 14.45 centimeters we've got a strip of um, the Eden Gar ever sorry ever Eden designer series paper and we're using the light soft succulent piece with the gold um, the gold uh, uh, what do you call it sprigs I suppose on there um, this one is two centimeters wide by 14.45 centimeters long we've got a piece of the ever eden cotton paper and we've got that in a darker color the soft succulent and this one is the same size uh sorry this one is a little bit bigger so it's three centimeters across and 14.45 centimeters long we're going to die cut that piece so we'll get to that shortly we've got two pieces of gold foil cardstock and these are each uh, now let me see 3.5 centimeters by 4 centimeters so not quite a square a little bit bigger than a square we're going to cut we're going to do a bit of die cutting with those we've got a little piece here for our sentiment which is 8 centimeters by 1.8 centimeters wide and then we've got our beautiful gold shimmer ribbon which is 8.5 centimeters long and I've just sort of snipped the end there at an angle so this is the ribbon that we're using so it's the gold shimmer gold shimmer ribbon that's that one there this is beautiful great for all your Christmas projects too if you're looking for a nice gold ribbon for your Christmas projects this is the gold shimmer ribbon so feel free to write down any of these um, that you would like I'll give you the code for the gold shimmer ribbon it is 156470 if you would like that one um, Deborah says is the gold foil cardstock the same thickness as the uh, colored car standard cardstock um, I think it's a bit thicker actually Deborah I think it's a little bit thicker it's it, it would be I'm not sure of the actual weight weightage of it but it would either be the same thickness or thicker but it's yeah it's a good strong cardstock that gold cardstock all right um, just double checking yeah that's for the other card don't need that one all right making sure I've got all the bits out for this one okay and then of course we're going to use some of that gorgeous bling all right so um, we'll pop those to the side and the first thing we might do is the um, die cutting so we're going to use our two pieces of gold cardstock and that beautiful cotton paper we'll do our die cutting first and then we'll go on with all of our stamping okay usually I do my stamping first but I thought we'll change it up today I'm going to use my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine today and let's grab out our dies here we go so the dies I'm going to be using is this little gold leaf here 
uh, not gold leaf, it's going to be cut out of the gold and become a gold leaf, but that little leaf there. And we're also going to use this long border here. So we'll take that one off there as well. All right, pop those over to the side. Oops, sorry, just trying to get myself organized here. Right. Okay, so we'll do the leaves first. I'll just move those ones to the side for a moment. We'll do the leaves first. All right, so I've got my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine here. I've got my number one base plate and my number two clear plate. I'll pop that into my machine there. Then I'll put my cardstock down and I'm going to turn the leaves upside down. So I've got the cutting surface facing down onto the leaves and just putting them at a little bit of a diagonal there to fit on there and another clear plate on the top. All right, and then we'll just run that through our die cutting machine. Oh, Judy said she used to use the back of a, a spoon uh, before she got her bone folder. What did you use to um, use the back of a teaspoon for, Judy? Was that for burnishing the edges of your cardstock when you folded it? Because that's a good idea too. All right, so I'm going to take my take your pick tool. In the back of the dies, there's little holes here where you can poke the cardstock out. Because sometimes in some of the dies, the cardstock will stick in the dies. So you just poke your tool through those little holes. And there we go. We have a beautiful little gold leaf. All right, so that's one. Let's do the other one. Always a good idea to clean off any little bits that are left on your plate, any little bits of cardstock. Clean them off before you do another cut because otherwise they can put impressions into your cardstock as you're feeding it through and you certainly don't want to be putting extra dints or anything in your beautiful um, pieces that you're die cutting because that could ruin the look of them. So just make sure your plates are nice and clean before you run them through. Oh, Judy said yes, she used to use the back of a spoon. Well, that's a good tip too. If somebody didn't have a bone folder, they could use the back of a teaspoon. <laughs> um, Amber said, detailed dies cut beautifully. We've never had a problem with it. Um, sometimes we run the die through the machine a couple of times to make sure it cuts through properly. Oh, yes, with the gold... Um, uh, oh, sorry, I missed another question there. Hmm. Is it the same thickness? Oh, does it cut detailed dies or is it too thick for detailed dies? Oh, that's what Amber was responding to, Deborah. No, we've never had a problem. It does cut detailed dies, yes, the gold foil. Yep, definitely does. Never had a problem. There we go. So there's our second leaf. Okay, so let's do now, I'll just take these little bits off here. And we'll do our beautiful border now as I said this cotton paper is very very thin so you have to um, just be a little bit gentle I'm just going to move my host code over the out of the way for a moment because my stamp and cut and emboss machine wanted to keep sticking to that all right so I'll pop the paper down we've got the dark side up oh hey Robin how are you going great to have you here with us and I'm going to pop down my die. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the die towards the right hand side, the right hand edge, so that, and I'll use a little bit of washi. I've got a little skinny piece of washi here um, so that we can cut that beautiful edge along there like so. I wanna make sure that it doesn't go off the edge though. So I'm just trying to get that lined up straight. There we go. I'll put my washi tape just over there to hold that in place. Well, this washi tape's not very sticky anymore. I think I've used it a few many times. Might need to get a new piece. We'll see how we go. Oh, yeah, I think I need a new piece of washi. That's not going to hold. Okay. 
So of course, because this cotton paper is very delicate, you need to be careful where you're placing your washi tape because you, if you are using washi tape to hold your dye in place, you certainly don't want it to tear that beautiful cotton paper. So I'm going to put it to holding towards the outer edge where it's going to cut that piece away because I want to keep the other edge intact because I'm going to use that to adhere to my next piece. There we go. All right, and then we'll take that through. Oh, what's happening? There we go. That's got it. Okay. Let's gently take that through. Uh, oh, Robin says, thank you. Not too bad. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Robin. It's good to have you with us today. All right. So now we'll just remove that washi tape from the dye. And we can remove our machine. Now we finish with our die cutting and we'll very gently take our piece out of our die and look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that beautiful piece there. So you get all these little extra little bits stuck in your die sometime. I'll show you how to use that die brush and this extra piece we're just going to throw that away and I'll clean that all off later. All right, so I'll show you how to clean that die. So what you're going to do is I'll turn that die upside down and I've got my foam pad just in a, um, this is just a Tupperware container that I had in the cupboard. So I'm just going to run my die brush across my die to help release all those little bits of paper. And there we go, got all of those little bits of paper. Oh, there's one tiny little bit just in there. Did that come out? Nope, it didn't come out. All right, so what I'll do, it's a tiny little piece, so I'll just use my take your pick tool to poke that last little bit out. There we go, and that's how the die brush works. So makes it much easier to get your pieces out. Okay, I'll pop that over there, and I'll just put my die straight back onto my die sheet so that I don't lose that. There we go. Okay. All right, so we've got our die cut pieces. There we go. Now we need to do our stamping. So I'll put our die cut pieces over to the side and we'll do our stamping now. So we're going to stamp onto the two pieces of white. Then we'll have all of our pieces ready and we can then put everything together. All right, so I'm just gonna bring in a little piece of grid paper just to protect my work surface while I am doing my stamping. And I usually start with my sentiment first, but we are gonna be doing some heat embossing. So I'm gonna do my images first, and then we'll do the, um, the sentiment today. We're gonna to do it a little bit differently to how I normally do it. Um, oh, you could, Judy, actually, yes. Use the leftover bits from the, um, the green border as grass on another card. Yes, you could, that's a great tip. Good thinking. Um, oh, Megan said she was gifted a bone folder when she joined Stampin' Up! from her upline. Oh, that's nice. That's very kind. That's great. Um, oh, hi, Helen from New Zealand. I'm so sorry I didn't see you jump on. I just saw then. I was just scrolling back up through some comments to see if I'd missed anything, and I did. Sorry that I missed you saying hello. It's great to have you with us today. Let me just check, is there anything else? Um, oh, Megan says she can't get a clean fold with a bone folder, no idea why. Oh, that's interesting, Megan. Um, are you scoring your cardstock first before you're folding it with a bone folder or are you just trying to fold your cardstock and then run your bone folder along? I always score, find it, I get a nicer fold when I score first with my paper trimmer. So I use the scoring blade on my paper trimmer, which is, so here's my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer and we've got the two blades. We've got the scoring blade and the cutting blade. I score first, so I go over it about oh, probably three or four times, and then I fold my cardstock and then burnish with my bone folder. 
So maybe if you um, try doing it that way and see if that helps you. And then you get a nice firm, uh, a nice um, crisp fold on your edge there. And when I do it with my bone folder, just to show you, um, I hold my bone folder fairly flat. I always use the pointed edge. Different people hold it different ways and some use the other end. I find if I do it that way and I go over it a couple of times, flip my card over and then do it on the other side, then I get that nice fold, that nice deep fold. The other thing is too, I wonder which way you're folding your cardstock. So here's another tip. When you're scoring with your, um, whichever way you're scoring, you'll create um, a valley fold with the scoring tool. It pushes it in, okay? So what you want to do is you want to fold your card, flip your cardstock over and fold it so that the other side of your cardstock where you've got the mountain fold. So when you score, you push the tool. Say for instance, I've used my um, scoring tool. Hang on a minute, let me get it back out. Just give you a, this little tip here before we move on to help you, try and help you with your um, your fold. So you would put it in, you'd put it in, so 10 and a half, you'd score it, score, 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 score. You'd take, it, so you'd take it out, so now you've created a valley fold, which means the cardstock dips in like that. What you want to do is you want to flip your cardstock over and fold it where you've got that mountain fold, okay? So this is actually the side that I would have scored, but I've turned it over so that the mountain fold is on the inside. Because you always, you kind of think, well, it should really fold where the valley fold is, but in fact, it folds better where the mountain fold is. So try that, flip it over, try folding it the other direction. See if that helps you. And let me know next week, when, when we're back on next week, let me know how you go. Or on Thursday, if you're joining me on Thursday. Um, yeah, give that a try and see. All right, what else did I miss? Is there anything else that I missed? Just having a look. Hey, Julie, I can't remember if I said hello to you, but thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, great, you'll give that a try. Awesome, I hope that that herds, helps. Not herds, <laughs> I hope that that helps. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, you had heard that before about mountain and valley folds. Yeah, it's a little um, it's a little tip, I guess, that you pick up as you've been around card making um, for a long time and doing different techniques and things like that. So, yeah. All right. So let's bring in our soft succulent and our evening evergreen inks and our stamps. Now I haven't put my stamps on my block yet either. So let me do that. All right, so we're going to need, I think we need a D block for the large stamp. Oh, we might need a bigger one. Let me just double check. I can't remember now. Take out this large one. I've already put my stickers on the back. In fact, I think Amber stickered all of these for me. Let's see. Yep, that will fit on my D block just, just, just fits. Oh, actually, that goes off the edge a little bit. I might go up to my next size just to be sure. I want to be sure. What am I doing? This is the E block. So I'll pop it on an E block just to be sure. I think I'll probably get away with it on a D block, but I want to be sure that I get a, a proper stamped image. Um, and then we need our little leafy images. Um, so let me see which ones I was using. I think it was this one. I'll put that on my D block and we'll get out this little one and i'll put that one on i've got another little one here a b block now if you don't have all these blocks that's okay you can use any of the larger blocks for any of, i've just got multiple blocks in lots of different sizes so um i just you know utilize them all really <laughs> uh there we go so i think we'll be right with those two and are they the ones that i use i think so I think so, yes. All right, all good. Okay, anyway, really, you could use any of those. We're just using those little ones just for a bit of fill. Um, so you could really use a combination of all of those if you wanted to. 
it doesn't really matter which ones you use just to do a little bit of fill um, in the on the image you'll see what I mean when when we get to that all right so we've got those two we are going to start with our lighter green so our soft succulent sorry I feel like I'm working over to the side you know why I'm trying to line up with my um, my little uh, blog here my little blog sign but that's not actually in the middle <laughs> all right so we're starting with soft succulent and we are going to stamp two of this floral image now you can turn it whichever way you like it doesn't really matter which way you have it um, I think I'm going to turn it this way I think this is the way I had it the first time so we're going to stamp two of these so tap 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 with your ink we're going to be stamping it down about here no precise measurements today just down about there that's number one and then we'll stamp a, num a second one now just to let you know because this is a distinctive stamp if you're not getting a really crisp image you might find that your ink pad is a little bit too juicy so what you can do if you find that your ink you're not getting a nice crisp image with a distinctive stamp because the distinctive stamps have got a lot of detail in them you don't want a stamp pad that's too too juicy if you find that your stamp pad is a bit too juicy or a bit too wet we call it juicy but a bit too wet what you can do is take an old bone folder or you can use a plastic spoon to do this as well and I keep an old bone folder especially for this as you can see it's all inky stained and what you do is you scrape along the surface and you're just pushing the ink down into the stamp pad so that it's not you haven't got too much ink sitting on the surface but you've still got enough ink there to, to ink your image but it's not going to be too inky so just go over your ink pad a few times just be sure that whatever you use doesn't have a sharp edge because you don't want to damage the foam on your ink pad that's why I like to use a bone folder because it's got nice smooth edges all right or the back of a plastic spoon will also work you could use an old um, gift card or credit card that's not usable anymore like an old expired one or one that you've um, a gift card that you've used Oops. sorry I'm just grabbing a baby wipe to clean my bone folder now um, so yeah so of course that will get a little bit inky so you just clean that off you could run it under the tap um, run it under the tap or I like to use baby wipes to get it nice and clean use an old cloth oh Judy the stamp set I was um, saying at the beginning this is an early release stamp set it's actually going to be released on the 2nd of November so next Tuesday it's not in the online store just yet it'll be there next Tuesday um, this is a stamp set and die bundle that is um, having an early release from the mini catalog which is coming out in January so we're getting it a couple of months early as a demonstrator we were able to get it even a month earlier than that which is um, typical of being a demonstrator we get most of the products earlier than everybody else um, and which is one of the great perks of being a demonstrator but yes next Tuesday it'll be available in the online store did I get that clean there we go yes the greens are a little bit deeper in color so sometimes they take a little bit more cleaning so there you go got some more tips I've got lots of tips for you today hey lots of techniques I love sharing lots of ideas and tips and techniques with you all to help you in your um, in your creativity all right so now we're going to use a little bit of evening evergreen and we're going to add some of these other um, leafy images just to do a little bit of fill here and there all right so tap 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 let's just add a few here and there anywhere you like just to add a little bit of something doesn't matter if they overlap a little bit over the first image because we are going to be covering up a lot of that as well with I'll swap over to the other one now um, we're going to be covering up a lot of that too with our sentiment label so it doesn't matter which ones you use or how many you use 
one, two, three, four, five. We've got five there. I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good amount of fill at the moment. Um, so yeah, so we might leave it there like that. So at the moment, that looks really messy, but we are going to be putting our label over. So it's going to be hiding some of that, and then you'll actually see what um, the finished image will look like once we get our label on there, and it will look great. All right, so ink off any of those, uh, sorry, inking off that excess ink there. Give that a good clean on our Simply Chamois. Fabulous little cleaning tool, the Simply Chamois. These are found in the annual catalog if you're looking for one of these or you can find them in my online store under the tools section. There we go. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, all right, so I think I just answered that question. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, everyone's talking to each other about their ages. <laughs> you guys are all funny. Uh, that's right, Glenda. Age is just a number. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Uh, Judy said, Toby asked me what I wanted for Christmas. He said, or should I just ask Auntie Mandy? Yes. <laughs> Training him up in the way he should go. Yay. Good job. Tell him to ask Auntie Mandy. Navon <laughs> uh, said she loves messy. Yes, me too. I reckon messy is a good sign of a good crafter. Don't you think? <laughs> All right, we're going to pop this one to the side for the moment and we're going to go on with our sentiment. So I need to take out my hello there sentiment. So we'll get that out of there. It's funny because every time, Navon, that I do a um, technique club class, because I run a technique club or I have a technique club, and um, every month we have uh, a new technique that I um, that I teach my participants my club participants and um, every month I, I seem to always be saying now this is a bit of a messy technique so make sure you've got your baby wipes nearby but um, yeah it's it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun all right so we're taking our Versamark I should turn that up the right way so you can see it our Versamark ink this is a clear ink pad but this is one that we can it's a pigment ink and it's one that we can um, emboss Heat emboss. All right, so then we're going to just stamp that down on our strip of basic white. Then we will do the magic. Oops, hang on a minute. There we go. Okay, so I've just got a couple of scraps of paper here that I keep especially for my gold embossing powder. And this is the gold embossing powder. We're going to sprinkle that now onto the Versamark ink and it'll adhere to that. Oh, I didn't use my stamp, my um, embossing buddy, did I? That's okay. We can. I always keep a little paintbrush nearby. I shake off the excess on the back, and then if you've got any stray little granules of that embossing powder around your image, you can just brush them away. We did used to have a um, great little tool which isn't available anymore but we're hoping that Stampin' Up! will bring it back called an embossing buddy and it's an anti-static pillow and we used to rub that across the cardstock first before sprinkling the embossing powder and then the embossing powder would only stick to where you put the ink but um, sadly Stampin' Up! aren't selling these at the moment but we're hoping that they'll bring them back again. So there you go so we've got the embossing powder on there now I'll just return the excess embossing powder back into the container before I even turn on the heat tool because we do not want to accidentally heat any of that extra embossing powder because it will melt and then it will be unusable. So always cap your embossing powder before you turn on your heat tool. That's my big tip of the day. All right, I'm going to get my tweezers to hold this so that I don't burn my fingers because this is a smaller piece. Where are my tweezers now? Oh, here we go. I've got three different pairs of tweezers in my little container here. These ones will do me. All right, so I'll just heat up the heat tool. We've got two settings on our heat tool, number one and number two. 
Number one is great for if you're trying to um, dry something. Like so, if, for instance, if you've done a bit of watercoloring. Number two is the setting that you want to use for heat embossing. And then this is where we're going to see the magic. So for those of you who may not have seen heat embossing before, you'll now, now see that gold powder melt and become a glossy, shiny, beautiful gold raised image. There we go. So there we have our beautiful gold sentiment. And that's as easy as that is. So not sure if you can see that in the light. It's a little bit hard to pick up on camera, but it is shiny and raised. It's beautiful. All right, so uh, heat embossing was actually the first technique that I ever discovered at the first stamp class or stamp workshop that I ever went to. And that got me in, uh, made me fall in love with stamping. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh my goodness, I need some of that magic stuff. What is that? Um, and that got me hooked into card making. So there you go. But yes, it is like magic when you see it for the first time. Right, so now we've got all of our pieces ready. We can put together our card. So here are all of our pieces. Let's move our paper out of the way. All right. Um, <laughs> Megan says, I can feel an asthma attack coming on, Mandy. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Not if you wear your mask, Megan. You'll be all good. You'll be all good. <laughs> Alrighty. So what we're going to do, we are going to pop all these little pieces over to the side and we're going to start by adhering our white piece, our white stamped focal image onto our cardstock. So we'll just turn that over. I'm going to use a little bit of stamp and seal. I love the stamp and seal. It's nice and quick and easy and it's really sticky. So it's a great adhesive to use. go oh as you can see super sticky sticking to my fingers alrighty so we're just popping this down on here there we go okay uh, Glenda said in the old days we used to use a hairdryer to melt our embossing powder I used to use my toaster Glenda used to have to hold it over my toaster back in the day you could actually turn your toaster on without toast in it. Nowadays, you have to have your toast in your toaster for it to turn on. Um, but yeah, I used to do that and hold the piece. You would actually hold it that way with the heat coming up underneath and hold it over the toaster to melt the um, powder. I did that for quite a long time before I got my very first heat tool. And I still have my very first heat tool to this day. It still works. Um, however, it's pretty old now and so now I have um, the Stampin' Up! one because I was worried my old one was going to break at any moment. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of adhesive onto my beautiful border piece here because this is such um, so soft and delicate. I don't know how the liquid glue would go on it. I haven't tried it. But I was a bit worried that the liquid glue might make it a little bit um, crinkly. So I'm going to use um, some dry glue. You could use the stamp and seal or you could use um, tear and tape. And just run a piece of adhesive along. Hang on a minute. We'll get this running first. Just run some adhesive down the length of that piece. But I'm staying within the edge. Ah! I'm staying within the edge of the um, piece because I don't want to go over that stitched line. There we go. It's a little bit sticky. Oh, tear and tape might have been a better option. I'm thinking I just got a bit sticky there. Oh, didn't get that right to the edge. I need that to go right to the edge. That go to the edge? Go to the edge. There we go. Okay. Oh, all right. There we go. Have to be careful with this paper. It's very delicate. Okay, so now we are going to attach our designer series paper strip onto our border. Sorry, hang on. I've just got glue. Got that adhesive on my fingers now. I'll just get rid of that. Don't want to be sticking the wrong pieces. Uh, Megan says she thinks the liquid glue could soak through. It could too, Glenda, because this, uh, sorry, Megan, this um, paper is very delicate. 
So I'm just going to line that up. We want our stitched border to be showing. So there we go. I think too with the um, tear and tape, I probably would have had better control over where I was putting that tape to that um, adhesive. Sorry. So there we go. All right. So we've got the nice stitched line down the side there, down the edge. And... Um, Yep, that lined up okay. I thought I might have gone a bit far, but that's all good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to pop this piece up onto dimensionals. So we'll get out our Stampin' Dimensionals. There they are there. And I'm going to get my trusty Take Your Pick tool to pick up my dimensionals. And we're going to pop some dimensionals down the frame. Not the frame, the border. It's a border, it's not a frame. I'm going to make sure I put plenty down there because it is just designer series paper. So it's much lighter weight than cardstock and we certainly don't want it to be um, saggy at all. So I'll just pop those down there like that. And now I'll use my take a pick tool again to stab into my dimensionals and pick up those backings. Like so. Pop them into the bin. Okay. Now this is going to line up right against the edge of that white piece there. So I'll just pop that down gently and carefully, making sure to line that up along the edge there. There we go. Okay, so there we've got our beautiful border. How gorgeous is that? It's looking beautiful already. And now you can see, remember I said before that it looked a bit messy with all of that stamping, but now you can see part of that is covered up and it's looking beautiful. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to trim the ends of our um, sentiment banner here. Now you can either do that with your trimmer or you can do it with scissors. I'm going to be brave and do it with my paper snips. I've got my trusty paper snips here and I'm going to just use my snips and go cut and then I'm going to try and cut the other end at the same angle which is often a little bit tricky to get it exactly the same angle if you're worried you can use your paper trimmer there we go that's not too bad okay so yeah definitely use your paper trimmer if you're a bit worried about getting the angles exactly the same I mean if they're not exactly the same it doesn't really matter all right now we're going to attach our ribbon. So let's bring in our glue dots, our mini glue dots. This is my favorite adhesive for ribbons and embellishments. We are going to pop a few glue dots just along the bottom edge of the reverse side of our sentiment label so that our ribbon has got something to adhere to. So I'm just pressing the cardstock to the little glue dot. You might see the little glue dot there on the tape. So our old glue dots, you used to have the, the, um, the glue actually on the roll, but these new rolls now, they're actually on the tape part that you pull out. So you just have to kind of um, use them in a little, a little bit of a different way, the way that you attach them to your piece. Okay, so now we've got our glue dots along the, the bottom there of our tag. So we're going to get our ribbon. I've already trimmed the end of our ribbon. And we're just going to attach our ribbon to our tag like so. I'm going to need to trim up the other end of it because it's a little bit too long. But we'll have it about there like that. Just lining that up. There we go, and that will adhere to those glue dots. Oh, I've even put them probably a little bit too high, but that's okay, they've caught on there. And then what we can do is we can trim the other end of our ribbon to be the, at the same angle as our um, sentiment banner there. So let's go snip. There we go, okay. Now, if you don't like your, your ribbon quite that long, you could trim it up a little bit, depending on yeah, the length that you like to have it. Okay, and then we're going to pop that up onto dimensionals. Oh, actually, before we do that, before we put the sentiment label, I nearly forgot, we've got to add in our little um, sprigs here. 
So let's work out where we're going to put those. We've got one there and one there like so. I'll just double check to see where this is going to sit first to make sure I'm putting them in the right spot. Might move that down a little bit there. Yep, they'll sort of go like that. So when you're doing it like that, they're going to look like they're in a bit of an arc, but in fact, they're not. They're actually going in the same direction, but nobody will know. All right, I'll use a little bit of liquid glue to adhere those down. So using lots of different adhesives today. All the adhesives have got different uses. So pop that one down there. And the good thing with the liquid glue, as I always say, is that because it is a liquid glue, you have got a little bit of um, wiggle room. So you've got time to maneuver that if you're not happy, whoops, if you're not happy with where it goes the first time. Um, because the glue is a wet glue, you've got time to reposition so let's see, so we'll try that again, put that down there like so. Okay, I might move this one over a little bit. So see, I've got that wiggle room now, or well, the wiggle time to just maneuver that a little bit and I'm pretty happy with where that one's sitting. So we'll press them down now so they can stay in position. Cap our glue, there we go. All right, just give my little, my hands a little wipe um, so sorry, I've missed a few comments here. Let's just see. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, tape. Yes. Um, oh, you're getting this for your birthday in about five weeks, Megan. Awesome. Deborah said me too. Is that in response to what Megan said? Getting it for your birthday, Deborah? That would be great. Um, oh, Judy said she's going to order the stamp set. It's gorgeous. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Judy said, I can't remember when you started card making. I started about 1996. Kylie and I went to classes together. Um, future daughter-in-law bonding. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I started in when Jake was three. So he was born in 97, 97, 92, 94, 97. Yeah, so I started about around about 2000, year 2000. So I must have started a little while after you, Judy, actually. Yeah. Um, oh, Rose said she loves the border. The green is beautiful. Yes, yeah. Um, Julie said, whoops, Julie said, I I think just the stamped images look good too. Great for a beginner stamp and quick quick and easy cards. Yes, most definitely, Julie. I agree. Yeah. Um, can't wait to get the cotton paper to play with, Megan says. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's gonna be your treat to yourself, is it? Oh, awesome. Oh, the toaster you were referring to, Deborah. Yes. Heat embossing over the toaster. Yes. Those were the days, hey. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pop my sentiment down, but we're going to put it on dimensionals. It's going to overlap the um, border here a little bit. We're gonna have it overlap the border. So where it's going to overlap the border, I'm gonna pop one layer of dimensionals there. Now, because this border is already up on one layer of dimensionals, that means one layer, two layers. So on this side of the cardstock, or the sentiment where it's going to be attaching to the cardstock, we're going to need two layers of dimensional. So I'm going to bring in my minis, my little. Um, now, if you don't have the mini dimensionals, you could use um, some cut down pieces of the larger dimensionals. Okay, and then I'm going to use two layers of dimensional on this end and in the middle as well and I'll go over that glue dot just to make sure I'm catching that edge of that um, ribbon. Now before I remove the backings, oh, I already removed the backing of that little one. Hang on a sec, let me just pop one of those backings back over there. I just want to check to see that I've got the dimensionals in the right places where I need them to make sure that's going to be nice and be sitting nice and flat. Yep, that will be good. Okay, so let's 
release those dimensionals, the dimensional backings. And we're going to pop our sentiment down here like so. There we go. Great. Good, good, good. And now we just need to finish off with our bling. So what do you think? It's looking good so far, hey? So pretty. All right, let's bring in our gorgeous garden gems. And we're going to use some of the marquee shaped ones to look like leaves. And we're going to put some here and there. I'm going to put some actually on this on this little spriggy leafy bit. That one there. And then we'll put another one over here. Let's see, let's put it up here. And we'll put a third one down the bottom somewhere. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll put one, we'll put one down here. Look like it's coming off that one there. So there we go. There is our beautiful card. What do you think? Isn't that gorgeous? I love these gems. They're so gorgeous. And really the images that we could see that we were given, um, it's, it's like looking in a catalogue. Whenever you look in a catalogue, it doesn't look the same as seeing something in real life. Like they're always so much more beautiful. I think I need to trim the end of my ribbon a little bit here though. I think that's a little bit long. It's just going off the edge of the card. And we don't want it to be catching on the envelope. So there we go. There you go. So let's bring in our other one. Yeah, the gems and the papers I find too as well. Um, always look more beautiful in real life than ever you see in a catalogue. So there you go. So that is my card for you today. And I hope that you really enjoyed that. I'm just catching those last comments here. Um, uh, let's just see. Oh, Judy said she thought that I'd had a, a play with her at some point with card making um, before I got into it. I just had a flash through my mind. Oh, maybe I did, Judy. I don't remember. It's such a long time ago. Maybe I did. <laughs> no worries, Megan. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, great to have you with us. Um, Navon says, still love that card a lot. Yeah, fantastic. Glenda said, beautiful card. Robin says, love it. Julie says, oops, I lost Julie's comment. Where did that go? Oh, have you got the cotton paper, Mandy? Is it see-through? Um, yes, the cotton paper is the one that I used here, Julie, for the border. And no, it's not see-through. It's very thin. It's very, it's a very, this is it here. It's a very lightweight card. It's similar to a tissue paper. Um, and it's kind of glossy on one side or like shiny on one side. And the other side is dull. If you, if I turn it over like that, maybe you can tell, a bit hard to tell on camera. Um, but yeah, it's really lightweight, really beautiful to work with. And that's what I use for that gorgeous border. So it's given that really soft border along the edge there. Oh, you're very welcome, Robin. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Chitska. Chitska said, beautiful card. Love it. Ro Rose said, beautiful as usual. Lovely card. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. Um, Angela said, love the card. Judy said, gold embossing memory brought back to your mind. Oh, okay. Maybe we did. Maybe we did. Um, oh, you're welcome, Julie. I'm glad you like it. All right. So what I'll do is I will tip the the camera back up. Does anybody need any of the um, product codes again too? Um, what I might do is I'll pop, I will, when this is available next week, I will post about it as well. So everybody knows that it's available for purchase and I'll be sure to put a link through to my online store um, and I'll give the, the codes as well. But if, if I forget to put the codes in, rem remind me um, or I'll message me, private message me and ask me for them. Um, but the code for the stamp set is 157823. The code for the dies, oh, wait a minute, I need the packet, is 157831. But you will be able to purchase them as a bundle 
and save 10% because they will be available as a bundle. Okay, so if you want both of them, be sure to get them together as a bundle and save yourself 10%. The papers, let me give you the codes for the papers. Um, hang on a minute, I've got a whole list here. Let me just grab the list, that will be easier. There we go. Uh, okay, the cotton papers, oh sorry, the Ever Eden 12 by 12 designer series paper. So that's the one with the gold foiling through it. So this one here, um, that one is 15996. What I might do is I might actually put the codes underneath this video too, so you've got them. The Ever Eden cotton paper is 15997. And the Garden Gems is 159277. And then if you want the whole collection of all of the products, you can get them all with one code. And that is 160849. And that will be $144 for the entire collection. If you want all of the products that I've just shown you today, um, that'll be $144. And just note that doesn't include the gold ribbon. That gold ribbon was separate. Um, there's no ribbon actually with this collection of products. It's just the stamp set, the dies, um, the designer series paper, the cotton paper, and the garden gems. Okay, so there you go. If you've got any other questions, feel free to ask me or send me a message. Um, Navon says, is the paper you just showed on Stampin' Up or can you buy it? So, sorry, is the paper you just showed on Stamping Up or can you buy it on Stampin' Up? Um, it's available, all of these products will be available, they're available right now to demonstrators, Navon, and they are available to demonstrators in the demonstrator website, but they will be available to the public next Tuesday on the 2nd of November. And the stamp set and dies will be carried over into the mini catalogue the January to June mini catalog, the papers and the embellishments are while supplies last only. Okay, so the papers and the embellishments won't be carried over. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I'm glad you like it. Um, Judy said, bingo, bundle order coming through. Yay, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'll quickly flip the camera up so I can say goodbye to you all face to face. I always like to do that. I think it's very good manners as well. Um, so just bear with me a moment. I'll cover up the camera and we'll flip that up. Here we go, okay. Oh, squeaky, squeaky. It's always so squeaky. I think half the time it's because I don't release the clamps. Oh no, actually they're squeaky when I tighten them back up too. I think they're just squeaky. That's just how they are. That's okay. <laughs> we can all live with that, can't we? With squeaky clamps. <laughs> there we go. All right. Okay. There we go. It's actually funny today because um, there's my card. Um, when I when I went to film and I looked at my top that I'm wearing today, my boho top. And I was thinking, oh, wow, that doesn't even match with my card today. I'm going to be very clashy, clashy, <laughs> not matchy, matchy. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, does it? There you go. My card is the focus, not my top. So it's all good. So I, I'm so glad that you all really liked that. They're really beautiful products. I can't wait till you can all order them. Next Tuesday, the 2nd of November, 2021, you'll be able to order these awesome products. Um, I'll be posting on my Facebook page when they are available. Um, oh, I know what I didn't show you. I've got a couple of more projects to show you that we have made with these products. So before you all go, let me quickly show you those. We've got two beautiful products. So here's another one using the dies. Now this one, um, this is using some of the uh, rose, the gold and rose gold um, paper. Okay, so that's not part of the suite, that's different paper, but that's just showing you another way of using those dies. That's using the same border die that I used today, just in a different way to using it top and bottom of your sentiment, makes it look like it's a full piece, a full border piece, but in fact, that's actually 
two separate pieces there. This one is a full border. It's like almost like an oval. It's kind of a cross between an oval and a rectangle. I'll show you on the dies. Oop, hang on a minute. I've got to put that down. I'm dropping everything here. There. It's using that, that large one there. Yeah. So that's a really beautiful one. And you can see that there. I, I meant to show you these when I had the camera down on the desk and I completely forgot. And then we've also got this one. So here's, here's a great one, Julie, you were saying about stamping, simple stamping. This one is just simple stamping onto a piece of basic white. We've obviously um, glitzed it up with extra die cut pieces. But yeah, if you just wanted to do simple stamping with this stamp, it's a great one to do. And we've used um, Rich, was it Rich Razzleberry? Had the colour in here. Yeah, Rich Razzleberry with the two greens in there. So there you go. So there's some more ideas. So we've got three different ideas there using these products. There's the three, the three cards. Of course, we only had time to make one today. And I showed you lots of other extra tips and techniques as we were going through too. So that always uses up a little bit of time too. But um, there you go. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this suite. Oh, well, collection of products. Um, oh, Rose said she loves my top two. Thank you. I do love a bit of boho. <laughs> I've got a few boho um, style tops. I really like them. And they're nice and cool as well, I have to say. Um, Judy said, oh, she's sent a message. She said to Kelly, you'll have to come and have a play with this one. Yeah, that'd be nice. She'll enjoy that. Um, thanks, Robin. Thanks, Julie. Oh, Judy said, wow, that card matches your boho top. Which one? I don't think any of them. Oh, this one. This one? Maybe. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> kind of. Kind of, sort of. I haven't got any green in my top, though. It's mostly purples and oranges. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, it would make great DSP. My top? It would. Oh, well, actually, or are you talking about the stamps, Julie? Maybe you're talking about the stamps would make great DSP. Either would make great DSP. <laughs> All right, well, I'll leave it there, everybody. Thank you so much for being with me today. Remember that if you want these products right now, they are available to demonstrators. If you would like to purchase the starter kit and become part of my stamping community, my very special, beautiful paper craft gems, um, whom I love and adore, um, then let me know because I'd love to have a chat with you about that, answer any of the questions you might have. Remember, it's only $169 for the starter kit, uh, but you get to choose $235 worth of product. So you get all of that additional product for free. And this whole collection of products is $144. So this whole collection of products is $144, but to join Stampin' Up! And put these into your cart starter kit is only is 169 so you could get these but you get to choose up to 235 dollars worth of product so you can put these in and then you'd still have I don't have a calculator so what's 235 take away 144 my brain's not working what's that about 90 90 something who's good at maths on here 235 Take away 144. My brain is not working for maths right now. <laughs> Whatever the difference is, the difference you get to put into your starter kit as well as these awesome products. So keep that in mind as well. If you're, if you're planning to purchase this whole collection and you're not already a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and then remember you will get a 20% discount on all your future um, Stampin' Up! products from there on as well. Um, if you would like more information, yell out, give me a give me a message, give me a call, whichever you would like, um, and I'll be happy to help you. All right, well, until next time. Now, remember, I will be live again on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. I'll be back again next. Uh, that's Australian Eastern Daylight Time because we in, we're in Daylight Savings now. Yay! And then again next Monday at 4 p.m. 
So until then, I look forward to seeing you all again and um, wait to see what I have in store for you next time. Have a great week, everyone. And as I always say, happy crafting. Bye.